spending money hand over fist that they don't have. Amen? They will talk about you like, well, you know, you, you people are in so much debt and you keep spending money that you ain't got and our government's doing the same thing. They keep spending money that they don't have. They keep borrowing more money and we owe more money now than we'll ever be able to pay back. But here's a good remedy for it. If we can get our love for God in the right place, if we can love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, we might begin to see things turn around. But until we put Jesus... By, and, and you know, everybody's got a God. You know, you might hear me saying God today, and you might think, well, I've got a God, you've got a God. We'll all just serve our gods. Let me clear it up a little bit. I'm talking about Jesus this morning. God in the flesh, the only way to heaven, the one that gave his life for this lost and dying world. If we'll put Jesus back in his rightful place in our heart, if we'll take and rebuild our altars in our homes and in our churches, if we'll begin to preach what thus saith God instead of what thus saith man, if we'll begin to get the Bible back, uh, real Bibles back into our churches and real Bibles and prayer back into our schools, then and only then will we see a change. Because only Jesus can make the change that I'm talking about this morning. We need all these religious guys to get together like Congress and the Senate did. And we need all of us to go into one big place and talk and discuss and decide and see what the remedy is. And then we need to come out with this book and say it's the same as it's always been. Jesus Christ and Him crucified is the same remedy for sin today as it's always been. Jesus and His blood. Oh, we like to have our conventions and our seminars and we'll come back saying, oh, they taught us something deep. And most of the time it ain't even the truth. Most of the time, it ain't even the truth. We need to get back. <clears throat> Amen. America has forgotten God how? By throwing the Bible out of our schools, by misinterpreting it in universities, by criticizing it in theological seminaries and colleges, and scoffing at it among the infidels and the atheists of the nation and claiming that it's just no more than just a book. Oh, it's much more than a book today. Amen. Hallelujah. False cults sweeping the land like never before with deceit and devilish doctrines. Pleasures, newspapers, magazines, businesses, and society have largely taken the place of God in our society. Turn on the news. When's the last time you heard anything about Jesus? Amen. Crime gets the eye and not Christ. Society and not salvation. Business and not the betterment of souls. Money and not missions. Earth and not heaven. Amen. We have become so... You know, they used to say, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Well, we've become so earthly minded, we're no heavenly good. We can't get anything done for the kingdom of God because we have forgotten about Him and decided to work 24-7 or decided to work 60 hours a week. We've decided to work seven days a week. We've decided to have our education and build all of this. And then at the end of our life, once we've retired, then maybe in between our fishing and our golf, we'll have time for God. If a man forgets God, his hope will be gone. It's like leaning on a house that cannot stand. And the nation is no different. We see this with Babylon. We see it with Greece. We see it with Rome. We see it with Medo-Persia. We see it with the Assyrian Empire. All the empires that forgot God were laid ruined, destroyed, and forgotten because they forgot God. To forget or put away God is to forget hope. To forget salvation. To expel God from our classrooms not only throws God out, but it throws out hope. And it throws out peace. And it throws out any hope that our children have of knowing the God of our fathers. Of knowing Jesus Christ, the One who came to earth to give His life for us. It's time we had enough teachers that had enough backbone. we got teachers that believe this book. But they won't take it to school with them. Amen. we got principals that believe this book, but they won't take it to school with them. We've got superintendents that believe this book, but they won't take it to school with them. If we had enough of them that claim they believe... Now see, this is the difference between believing and living it. If we had enough of them that claim... If we had as many Christians in this nation as they claim they are, we see a whole change in the whole atmosphere, Brother Sleece. 
The votes would vote out the homosexual marriage. The votes would vote out the abortion. The votes would vote out those in Congress and the Senate and the, and the White House that live ungodly, but they claim they know God, yet they don't live that way. But if we had enough people who would pick up the old Bible and begin to stand for something and instead of falling for everything and begin to retain God in their knowledge, begin to not just be an associate of God, but a child of the living God, not just on Sunday morning and Wednesday night, but on every day of the week, if we begin to live this thing, then we'd see real change. Then we would see real change. This is a scripture that you can quote by heart and we've, we've said it a lot around here too. But he tells us in 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, if they'll pray, if they'll seek my face, if they'll turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. In other words, if you'll remember me, you've forgotten me. He tells them over in Malachi that they're cursed because they have forgotten God. They have robbed God. God said, how? They said, how do we rob you? God said they didn't even realize they'd robbed Him because they'd forgotten about God. In all of their prosperity and all of their work and everything that went on, they had forgot about God. And Malachi writes, you robbed me because you don't give your tithe and you don't give your offering. My goodness, we have many people who claim, oh, I know God. I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm a Jesus believer. Well, if, we, if every one of them would pay their tithes and their offerings, we wouldn't even have passed the plate. We wouldn't have sent out no letters. We wouldn't have sent out no emails. We wouldn't have to ask nobody for no help. I believe in Saying you believe there's a God and living like you believe there's a God, that's two different things. Amen? Oh, you claim you know Him, but your life don't show it. America claims she knows God, and she might know some God. She don't know the God. If she did, we wouldn't be killing babies by the millions. If she did, we wouldn't be marrying and ordaining homosexuals. Amen? That's the kind of see the church just follows suit. I threw that ordaining part in there because that's, they follow suit. America has forgotten God and the church follows right along in their footsteps. America condones homosexuality and the church condones homosexuality. America condones killing babies and the church follows suit and begins to condone killing babies. Why? Because they're forgetting God. God's warning us this morning. God's warning us this morning, not just us. I hope that everyone in this place has God where He needs to be. Has put Jesus on the throne of your heart and He stays there. But we ain't just preaching to everybody in this church. There are people out there that will hear this in other countries. There are people out there that will watch this in other countries. There are people out there that will hear this that don't attend church regularly. And God is calling all of us back to a place of prayer. Back to a place of remembering God and putting Jesus back on the throne of our hearts and seeking His face. Because that is the, you, the, the next best-selling book by Rick Warren or Joel Osteen ain't going to fix this mess. The only thing that's going to fix this mess is the same thing that is always, that is to build an altar, get down on your knees and begin to cry out and seek the face of a living God and cry out for His mercy and His grace once again to be shown to a nation that has forgotten God. You see all of these people that we talked about, all these nations we talked about that forgot God. Without any repentance, without any turning back to God, their result, their end was the same. Destruction. But they all had the same opportunity that you have this morning. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we will return to Him, He will return to us. The door is always open for you to come back. But stupid man just keeps walking farther and farther away from the voice of God that calls, come, repent, because judgment is coming. Amen? You cannot forget God and get by with it for very long. You might think, well, you know, we've gotten by in this nation for a long time. Judgment's coming. You might think, well, I, you know, I've lived my life and... God hadn't had any part in it, and I, yeah, but judgment's coming. Yeah, but I don't need God yet, but judgment's coming. There's coming a day, you may want to forget Him, but there's coming a day you will stand face to face with Him. And then you will stand there, the Bible says, without excuse. Because all the times that you railed and said there is no God, well, you'll know then as you stand there at the judgment seat and see Him. Amen. 
And I don't believe He takes any pleasure in the destruction of people. Matter of fact, I think it probably brings great grief and sorrow to Him when man forgets about Him. Walks in his own way and finds himself depending upon a house that will not stand. Finds himself leaning upon a house that has no foundation. Finds himself trusting in the spider's web that can sustain nothing. No hope without Jesus. No peace without Jesus. The prodigal son came to himself. That's what we need to do. That's what you need to do today if you've forgotten God. That's what America needs to do today is come to herself. Because she's in the muck and the mire of the hog pen. And she needs to realize, hey, I done messed up. I done missed it. I got to get up and I got to go back to God. I got to get up and I got to go back to the Father. I got to get up and I got to remember God. That's what he did. The prodigal son came to himself and he began to remember his father and the father's house and the servants there and the way that they ate and the way that things were. That's what America needs to do. Remember how it was before we forsook God. And get up. Our forefathers would roll over in their grave today if they knew we owed trillions of dollars to Japan and China. Amen. To communist countries. Yeah, really. Amen. Borrow money from atheists and communists and the same curse that's on their money there, they're bringing over here, giving it to us. Amen? America is no longer blessed. She's cursed. And you might say, oh, she's prospering. No, she ain't. If you could see the debt that she owes, it'd go from here. Like I said, you could pile the money from here to the moon and it wouldn't be enough. We brought their curse over here. Amen. Of atheists and communists who threw God out of their nation years ago. And now we go by and get money by the barrelfuls, by the wheelbarrowfuls and bring over here. We got in bed with the devil. Amen. We got in bed with the devil. We forgot about God. That's the only hope for America today. That's the only hope for the church today is to remember God. Remember His Word. Remember His way. And begin to walk therein. Because His mercy is there. Amen. I'm not telling you there is no hope. I'm telling you there is hope today. But time is running out. Amen. Time is running out. So are the paths of all that forget God. And the hypocrite's hope shall perish. He shall lean upon this house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. The only hope for America today is Jesus. The only hope for you today is Jesus. Spend our whole life building up treasures on this earth. Laying up treasures. Every bit of that. Where thieves and robbers and moths can corrupt. And our only hope today is not in the Almighty. They talk about the dollar losing its power. Oh honey, I can turn you to somebody today that won't lose its power. They talk about the dollar, you know, losing its value. Oh, I hope something in my hand today that becomes more valuable and more precious every day. Hallelujah. My goodness. Don't put your trust in the dollar. Don't put your trust in the spider's web today. Because sooner or later, it's all going to come crumbling down. And only those that hold on to Jesus is going to last. Someone else this morning have something.